So it's day seven of quarantine. Actually, it's like day 28 for most people. Uh, still a good time to try something new, like not washing my hair for three years. You've already done that. Well, I thought it would be a good time to share with you guys how I did it or the top tips that you should consider before um, starting the no poo journey because I've gotten so many questions about it. So yeah. want to keep in mind is that it gets worse before it gets better. For those of you guys who've seen my first videos about my transition to no poo, it went bad for about three weeks. It got super greasy in the second and third week. I had dandruff and everything like that, but then eventually my hair balanced out and it found its cycle. Since our hair naturally produces sebum, shampoo usually strips sebum, and then conditioner re-adds some moisture. Now that you've removed shampoo and conditioner, your hair just has to get into that balance of providing the correct amount of sebum rather than overcompensating for the stripping of the shampoo. Just because you're doing no poo doesn't mean you stop washing your hair. You still have to put in the effort and wash your hair. I made a whole washing uh, your hair with only water tutorial, but it includes a lot of massaging your scalp, whoop, <laughs> a lot of massaging your scalp and a lot of brushing. Yes, that's right, brushing. So your hairbrush should be your new best friend. Basically what you wanna do when you do no poo is make sure that you're helping redistribute the oils from your scalp all the way to the ends of your hair. So what you wanna do is spend your time brushing out your hair. Now since I have straight hair, I can do this when it's dry. However, for people who have curly hair, you might need to do this in the shower with a wide tooth comb since uh, it can get quite hard to get through um, hair. Speaking of curly hair, every single person's hair reacts differently. And I cannot tell you what your experience is going to be. You may say that your hair will never work without shampoo, but with my hair, it did. It gave me more volume, it let me actually heal it, and for a lot of people, especially with curly hair, they use a curly hair method, but maybe you should check out someone with curly hair to give you those tips, because I don't know. But that is something you have to consider. Your particular hair type, how much oil it produces, is something you're going to have to adjust your no-poo system to. Speaking of no poo, it doesn't mean that you are not using anything to help out your hair. During difficult stages of the process, people advise using things like apple cider vinegar diluted with water to help uh, neutralize any issues on your scalp. So this can help eliminate um, extra grease, it can help eliminate uh, dandruff. I personally use an apple cider rinse every two weeks just to keep my hair feeling nice and silky and smooth. It also depended on what kind of water you have where you live. Now, when I lived in Europe, I had a very hard water situation, meaning the hard water would leave a lot of calcium deposits on my hair. So it was much harder to do no poo. Also, because I was not in the ocean anymore, um, I found I had to do the apple cider rinses more often than not. Look at me multitasking. Because it will also highly depend on your lifestyle. Now you may know, but I'm a scuba diving instructor or just an avid free diver and diver, meaning I'm in the ocean a lot. So, especially when I was in the ocean all the time, like when I lived in Comoros or Cambodia, I didn't have to wa worry about washing my hair at all. That is simply because the salt help uh, eliminate any of the oils and help keep my hair neutral and um, yeah, the drying qualities of the salt plus the tons of 
sun, that's the word I'm looking for, plus the ton of sunshine meant uh, I didn't need shampoo or conditioner. This may be different depending on where you live. As I mentioned in my previous video of me washing my hair for the first time in three years, I now wash my hair about once a week, once a week and a half with the plastic free um, shampoo just because I do not dive nearly as much as I did. I live in a very hot place with very hard water and I really struggled with not using shampoo at all. Most of the times I don't use anything but once in a while I do use um, the sulfate free shampoo just to help out my hair during that situation. So yeah, it's going to depend on your personal lifestyle and what's going on. So, in terms of the frequently asked questions, yes, my hair got healthier, no, I don't care that you think it looks greasy, uh, it's actually more voluminous than it ever was. You can definitely do this, it does depend on your hair type. You just have to try and see. Now is the perfect time to see it because nobody can see you. Try an apple cider rinse if you are unsure or if it's getting too bad about every two weeks or so. Your hairbrush is your best friend. Make sure to balance it out. It is possible for curly hair. It's probably better for curly hair than for straight hair, especially if you have very thin hair um, like I do. And if you don't want to do it, that is absolutely fine. If you want to still help the planet and live a plastic-free life, then there's plenty of alternatives that you can be using, like shampoo bars. So check those out. Uh, I have a whole list down below of shampoo-free um, alternatives, which don't use a heap of plastic, so make sure those Blah. Make sure to check those out, and if you have any other questions, leave it down below. My name is Kat, and yeah, I'm here to try and bring you tips to live an eco-friendly, um, ocean-friendly life. I do have a podcast, so you can check that out if you want to hear more from me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.